This is a so good man, the better. I paused that time. Better Call Saul podcast. My name is Brian, and with me, as always, is birthday boy Dave. Happy birthday, Dave. Well played, sir. Thank you very much. It is actually my birthday. I know, and I totally That's remember right. that before I walked in and you reminded me. <laughs> <laughs> I totally had that in my head all day. <laughs> all well, it's, day. It's funny because there's an ongoing joke for 12 years about mm-hmm. Tyrantula Doug every day is Doug's birthday. Yep. But today is actually my birthday, so when I tell you that, you don't believe me? Yep. Asshole. Yeah, well, happy birthday, Dave. It's a good one. Yep. Good it's one. All a Good Man is brought to you in partnership with the TV Showtime app. Make sure that you download TV Showtime. You can join, uh, man, it's close to like 500,000 Better Call Saul fans discussing the show, uh, ranking the actors, ranking the plot, uploading memes, leaving comments, and you can also do the same for thousands. Of TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty cool app. We keep talking about it. I have nothing more to say. It's fun. Yeah, they, they help us out. Uh, we're we're honored to be a part of it. It's been uh, good for us. We're glad that other people are um, checking it out. So. Yeah, and if you're listening to us through the app, let us know, because we, we've had some feedback through the app, but I am very curious to see just how many of you are clicking on the obnoxious second comment that stays <laughs> top of the list. Uh, yeah, so TV Showtime app, make sure to download it. On your smartphone through whatever store, I guess you download stuff, right? It's like well, iPhone, iPhone would be the App Store, and then Google would be Android, would be Google Play, right? Right, the Play Store, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Get it, download it, live it, love it, do it. <laughs> Dave and I also host the Nothing Important Podcast along with our friend and preview with the prior third Mike Jeff, where we talk to people who are more famous and successful than we will ever be. You can find that anywhere you can find podcast and on nothingimportantpodcast.com. And, and on iTunes, it's on the related content. It's on what? If you go to our iTunes page, it's on the related podcast section. Yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. So it should be easy for you guys to subscribe to that. I promise we'll have a new episode up soon. That's the plan, right, Dave? Sure. I think the next Nothing Important will have uh, the PFAB. Mm-hmm. Pa- I'm sorry. The Patrick Fabian interview, we have... Uh, Amongst ourselves, been calling it the jib jab with the PFAB. Jib jab with the PFAB. <laughs> uh, quick announcement starting next week. Look out for a plumbus among us, the rickest <laughs> Rick and Morty podcast. That will be me and Jeff, right. our uh, perennial third mic. He's getting upgraded to the second yeah, mic. He's, he's, he's usurping me at the mm-hmm. second mic. And uh, just make sure, Jeff, when you do this, that you flip flab the food flam with some smooch maps. Exactly. That's exactly. Right. So, uh, anybody out there who's a Rick and Morty fan, make sure to go to Twitter at a plumbus among us, spell exactly how it sounds. <laughs> and, uh, you'll be able to, uh, when we load the episodes, you'll be able to subscribe to that. We're going to start with three Oh one. Then we're going to go back to one Oh one. Keep working our way forward till mm-hmm. three Oh two hits. And then we'll do every new episode and we'll keep going back, trying to catch them all up. And from time to time, Dave might even pop in. Yeah, I'll probably have to be in on a lot of them because I am the technical supervisor of mm-hmm. the show, as it were. Mm-hmm. And then maybe if you watch the episodes, you'll actually get like uh, some of the Rick and Morty references that <laughs> Jeff and I always throw around. I don't even understand the title of the show. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it's, that's a lie. You showed me the plumbus yep. stuff. So it's yeah. it's uh. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. It'll be something a little different. Mm. And you'll be able to find that on TV Showtime as well. Indeed. So, they are exactly. apparently fans of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually how we got hooked up with them. They're, they listen to uh, It's All Good Man, contact me, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. So, but right now, we are talking about Season 3, Episode 5, called what, Dave? Chicanery. Sean Connery. All right. <laughs> Here we this go. This is a very good episode. <laughs> you know, I knew somebody was going to do like a Sean Connery impersonation. But what, what's funny about like celebrity impersonations is they they never kind of actually sound like right. the celebrity. Everybody just tries to sound like the comedian that's impersonating. Yeah, it's all derivative. Does, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to invoke the, uh, the Saturday Night Live version of it. 
before we get started, I just wanted to point out one thing. Um, yeah. I really like this episode. I was really into it, and yeah. I was digging it. Although, it's Mikeless. It is Mikeless. But still, it's not. It's not great because it's Mikeless. Mm-hmm. It's great because it's great. It, it's you a didn't great need episode. Mike. You didn't need Mike in this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, one one of the things I was thinking about while watching it before we get into it, it was like kind of like Better Call Saul's clip show, <laughs> right? It, it literally gave throughout the course of it in its own like natural progression, mm-hmm. kind of really gave like an overall synopsis of what Better Call Saul has done. Yeah, I would say this is definitely a landmark episode in the series. This mm-hmm. is it's really coming into its own. Mm-hmm. And they're really just kind of taking what they've set up for the past three seasons. I think this went a lot more into things as far as the progression towards Saul mm-hmm. and Jimmy's future. Right. That is it, it a really heavy episode. Right. right. Stuff. And that's why I say it's kind of like a clip show, because like when yeah. when TV shows do a clip show, not only do they do it to save money, but it always brings everybody up to speed of mm-hmm. what like the previous I think the former is more accurate, though. Save money. Yeah, yeah, that's probably way more why they do it. But you know, you know what I'm saying. Like it, it, it pretty, pretty much everything, even from like episode one, they bring up mm. like all the major things they bring up in this episode. It's funny you bring that up because for the past few days, I've had songs from the Simpsons clip show in my head, mm-hmm. especially the one where uh, Otto takes the family hostage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i've been on a clip show thing maybe that's what inspired it maybe 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 subconsciously man it got it got all in your brain piece it's like it's like uh don Eladio's necklace mm. that, that was a really good callback from you by the way because you kept talking about the necklace and then mm-hmm. and then i i think we mentioned it i know it was definitely mentioned on their official podcast that's why it's called the winking greek is because his name Eladio, means greek in spanish oh i didn't know that yeah okay and his so necklace his name his necklace has one eye on it, so ah, it's yes, the, winking the winking Greek, Greek guy. Which our listener Carl, he uh, he he actually tweeted us that while we were recording preview with mm-hmm. the prior, so we couldn't get it on the episode. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh, half an hour earlier, we would have mentioned it on preview with the prior. Yeah, and so, we'll we'll make sure to give you a proper shout out this week on uh, on preview, preview with the prior. Yeah, yeah, we'll do the proper shout out then. All right, so here we go. So the show opens. Uh, there's dudes cutting the lawn. They're moving shit into Chuck's house. Um, I, I wasn't sure at first if he was moving in or moving he, out. Yeah, I was going to say, was he moving in or was he just prepping for the evening? See, I, I I had no clue for a while there, which I guess is kind of like the genius of how they write stuff because it's mm-hmm. definitely like, well. It's all ambiguous. Yeah, what what the hell is going on? Um, I like how Jimmy walked in with a phone that looks like it was from 1967. Mm-hmm. And uh, while while that's nice, if it was from 1967, I like to think it would have actually been one, like, one of them rotary phones. Well, in 1967, you, didn't you still have to call the operator then? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I I was pretty young back then. Pass me, pass me in a Chuck. <laughs> just Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Like I just want to talk to Chuck, and then they would just pick a random guy named Chuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the, it got me with the you know the, yeah the ring on or off. So I assuming this is fresh from the divorce. Mm-hmm. But if you're having dinner with your ex, you don't do it like the next day, right? But I, I it, it didn't say anything about. Her at first, so when he was like ring on or off, that, that's what I thought too. I, like I thought he might be having a dinner with her post divorce. Yeah, that's what. But I thought, I thought it might go another direction if he's making everything not like maybe like he was trying to move on. Yeah, you know, but right, he, yeah, he's still tied. So, but so he like felt conflicted, mm-hmm. you know, about that. But, but no, it was because you know it was his estranged wife, I guess, divorce coming back, and he, you know, and he, he, you know, that was like this is obviously all one just like giant grand gesture of of love this whole thing yeah pretty much because he was so adamant about not canceling it and he's mm-hmm. trying to push through the uh the electricity allergy and uh that's when jimmy's like you know the bigger the lie the harder it is to dig it out because i was like what's the lie right you know what, <laughs> right what right lying about but yeah, yeah plus it's funny coming from jimmy right you know giving the sage advice <laughs> yeah <laughs> to chuck well no, um, jimmy knows from experience it showed uh chuck like cooking sea bass on a camping stove which was kind of funny because like this big like classy dinner and those were like all the clues i started to pick up on like oh yeah. okay because at first like they're putting in like the lights and shit i'm like is this like a remodel like did right. he remodel the house but um turns out it was all a ruse well actually i, I did watch this episode with tyrantula doug and mm. he th- he's like is this the same dinner scene from the last episode with rebecca i can't remember if that was season one or two i think that was season two right Hmm. um remember that dinner scene yeah where she shows her affinity for jimmy 
and, and it pisses Chuck off. But it can't be because in that dinner scene, he had electricity. Yeah. Right. He wasn't. Right. He didn't have the allergy yet. Right. So, but it's definitely like a, it kind of had the same vibe. It was like a callback to it in mm-hmm. a way. And, uh, you know, he, he explains the lack of electricity as billing issues. And then Jimmy, like, brings. Wink, wink. <laughs> Why are you having billing issues? No, the billing issue oh. was a change of. They got the address wrong. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 That's see? right. Well, they did that. That's thing. right. Yeah. They called back to that. Well, yeah. It was like kind of a funny parallel. Maybe that's where uh, Jimmy got the idea. Ah, uh, good call. Like, it creeped in. How him. ironic. Jimmy got the idea to fuck Chuck over by his own lie. Yeah. Yep. Which is hard to dig out of. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, full, the bigger it is, mm, the harder right, to dig out. Full circle. Yeah. Full circle. That's right. Um, and at first, when Jimmy walked in and the candles were out, I, I wasn't sure if he was part of the ruse or if he was. Like, cause then I was like, okay, well he's having all this shit installed. And even though he mentioned like not hooking up the light, mm-hmm. like the way that it was played, like when Jimmy walked in, I was like, okay, well maybe they had planned to turn on some of the, you know, like, cause mm-hmm. maybe they weren't going to use that particular light, but they're still going to plug in some shit. Like some low wattage lights. Or right. Something. Yeah. And then yeah. He, he walks in and he's like, what, what happened with the lights? Like, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Like, so did they have a plan to have some lighting? And then at the last minute, like, you know, Chuck backs out and lights the candles. No, no, mm-hmm. no. It was just all part of the. Oh, big ruse. A part of the ruse. Jimmy does the whole, like, oh, man, maybe we should go out. Like, yeah. Totally he's setting totally, it up. He's playing the straight man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. My main question is, why is Jimmy even there? I think Jimmy's there just to keep the ruse up because Chuck is such a man of integrity. Mm-hmm. He has a problem lying. Mm-hmm. So he feels more comfortable with Jimmy there to help him lie. Like, he's like the moral support like right. of sorts. Like, Yeah. Gotcha. Or it's just he has to be in there to keep the consistency with the callback to the other scene because Jimmy was involved in that scene, and they like to make their viewers think 